What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Played Out Podcast, the Age of Sigmar podcast, who definitely has not heard that bell. Uh, my name is Kyle, a.k.a. Creator Gator, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host, James. James, how you doing? Good. How are you, Kyle? I'm good. I'm good. I'm on a work trip, hence the the ghetto setup, but mm-hmm. it's all right. We're making the best out of this. We're in the hotel good. room. We're chilling. Missing all playing, good. though. Yeah, I know. That is 100% true. We're in dry season before the uh, Cherokee <laughs> Open. I know. Uh, we have, not this weekend, but next weekend is LVO. So that's something exciting to look forward Ooh. to with both announcements and like play and meta and all that fun stuff that we get to kind of like perk our ears up and see how it's all going down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm interested to kind of see how things have progressed. There's been a lot of, you know, balance patches recently and OBR True. seems like it's kind of fallen off a little bit. Yeah, I think it was like very much flavor of the month and now like people have kind of switched away from it. it. Yeah. I don't know how to play around it. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that after LVO, there'll be a balanced data slate Mm because I'm curious what they'll do. Um, I don't have any big requests except for obviously Stormcast. I'm always the, Mm -hmm. please, um, please (laughs) shoot your points down for the love of God or like make, make my hundred point, you know, chosen God knights have more than two wounds. (laughs) Yeah. Adamantium armor, yeah, you know, uh, Sigma, right? Yeah, the um, same as Goblin on Spider. <laughs> <laughs> True. It, I feel like if they lowered the points for like Redeemer units, there'd just be everyone would just like switch to Redeemer Flood, which yeah. I'm kind of here for because as an owner of Gardas, I am a Gardas fan. As a proud, as a proud father of many vindictors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a moment where someone was like, yeah, people are running like blocks of 15. And I was like, say less, fam. <laughs> I think I own 30 Vindictors. Oh, yeah. Send the boys plus, in. Plus, like, Vanquishers, plus, uh, um, what's it called? Secretors, plus uh, Liberators. So, like, I'm stacked. I'm if that's the meta, I'm here. I'm Send ready. Those. Give me some more battle <laughs> tactics. I'm sending them in. <laughs> There's going to be so many dead models off to the side <laughs> of the board. But no, yeah, that I, unfortunately, I feel like if they do anything for Stormcast, it's just going to be get us another pity battle tactic. Which mm-hmm. Listen, eh. <laughs> listen, that's points. Worked for Big Wah. Yeah, it did. True. But uh, this is just a like session zero kind of giving me an audio file to mess with and to practice and to see if I can upload anything while I'm on travel. Um, Cause like I said, I do kind of do that more often than I'd like. Um, and that'll, that'll give me something to, to keep this podcast rolling when I'm doing that. So I just have a couple little questions and answers um, about age of Sigmar and kind of our, how our interests got started and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I know we probably know the majority of these answers, but I figured I'd start a lot of good good conversations about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we started this addiction so, together. Actually, you were a little before me. Exactly. A little bit, yeah. The, uh, when when did you say that we started? Well, I remember you went to ACO, and I wasn't in the hobby yet. It was like post yeah. my, like, like we both did the whole, like, COVID hit. 40K during COVID. Yeah, exactly. That's like our COVID mm-hmm. hobby. And then... We hit it really hard. I remember I had one tournament experience where I was just like sweating my ass off because I'm just like, this is such a complicated game. I've never felt dumber in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then it I is. like, I like, I cut cut it cold turkey. And then uh, I know that you kind of picked up the dragons because like the age of Sigma models are so sick. So I know. I yeah, that's definitely where. Um... That's definitely where my interest kind of switched was we both got into 40k and I was like a big fan of it. I liked playing my Imperial Knights. Uh, I went to some like bigger local tournaments. There was like a couple clubs in the area that were always playing 40k, which was hype. Um, But there's always like I would always see like Age of Sigmar people like playing. And I was always curious about it because the sci-fi setting and I think you're in the similar boat where like the sci-fi setting for 40 K that grim dark, like everything is terrible. Everything sucks. Nothing's ever going to get better. Not hot (laughs) vibe. Yeah. Not, not necessarily our jam. Like we definitely more of the like magical whimsical, uh, 
like fantasy. Hey, things could get better. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah I mean? exactly. It's like not everything is like oh, everybody's some flavor of bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> I think uh, Haywo said it best when he said like you you could put if you play order, you could potentially be playing the good guys, which is something that I kind of like that idea. Of, Kyle, you know I. Mean? I serve the moon, all right? And the moon is in that. <laughs> I think that I'm the good guy. <laughs> I, I am the good guy. I just, I, the moon tells get me. Get to the things. good guys, but only for the gets. <laughs> only for the gets. Oh. The, um, but yeah, so like after, uh, I don't know when I like full, I don't, I think it was like a very like smooth transition from like 40k to Age of Sigmar. And like, I still have all my 40k armies um, but when 10th hit, I was like ready to go, like super excited to just jump on that 10th wagon for 40k. And I just never got into it. I, I didn't get the starter box, which I think is the big thing that stopped me. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't like to look at Terminators. I bought three Indominus boxes um, for the last edition for ninth edition, because I think blade guard models are so super cool. Yeah. You also like uh, the, the Necron side too. I did like the Necron side. I like both sides. Where like this one, I don't really care for Tyranids, and then like they uh, they're pushing like the Terminators and like the Flamer guys. I was just like, I don't. That's not really my eh. aesthetic. <laughs> that and but that also kind of came at a point where I was getting like more busy, like home and work life, mm-hmm. and I would really picked up Age of Sigmar, and like I was full in on like I I, I don't know how many points of Stormcast I have. I would say around four thousand. Mm-hmm. Um because dragons are thick they are uh, and i have a lot of dragons and they're also sick uh, <laughs> they're also it's sick good. and they're easy to collect because like the the dominion box was just such a big value mm-hmm. it was insane how much how many models you could get for a low amount like i think you could find the box it's like i definitely was paying like a, a good price for the dominion box was like 120 and i think you can get it like even lower than that now dang which is insane. You can get dragons get... in that box? No, you don't get dragons in that oh, box. Oh, okay. I was like, dang, son. Like, <laughs> that's no. the meta. Fucking slap that like button as many times as you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the um, you get the Lord Imperitant. Mm-hmm. You get three shield annihilators. Notably, not the Grand Hammer annihilators. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you get ten Vindictors. Mm-hmm. And you get uh, Yandrasta for the sh- uh, Stormcast. Nice. Which is like a... Oh, and you get the the flag hero, the Knight Velixor with banner of apotheosis. I've never heard you take that model. I've never heard those words for my entire it's life. It's terrible. It's ter- <laughs> I took it in like the first like two ever starter games. It's, it's that classic, like bring a hero to make a unit do a thing better. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's thing is like once per game, it can wave its flag and bring models back to units like okay. in an aura once per game. Uh, Exactly. And you have to roll for it. <laughs> so, so it sounds like it kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. So like once per and, game, and it like might happen. And, <laughs> yeah. And it's like 140 points. So if you're taking that, you might as well just take another unit of Vindictor. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? The three models you're going to get back where you could get like exactly. for, for 30 points less, you could take five new ones. Yeah. yeah. The, he has that. He has an aura, like a 12 inch aura of you get to reroll your charges, which mm-hmm. is cool. But yeah, like, good. he's a foot hero. True. So like, so he's not he's, fast. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not fast. He's not going to be deep striking with people to like give the aura. He's not to super do it. tanky. <laughs> he's just a he's just a dude with a flag. He doesn't hit good. He yeah. It, there's like a lot of things where you're like, ah, it's a classic Stormcast hero where it's like this man does this one thing and it like the wording of that thing and the points that he is makes or breaks that model. hundred percent. I, I have, he's a cool model. I have a bunch of them. I think I kit bash. I was going to kit bash one into a, a night quest or when I was mm-hmm. messing around with that, but, but yeah. Um, but yeah, as you say, you, you worship the moon. So yeah. tell me about the spiders and kind of how you got, what, when you started to come over to the age of Sigmar, right? Yeah. Well, what was the big thing that made you say, Okay, well, I want to sell all of my Tau. Yeah, literally. And I want to play Age of Sigmar. I never want to touch a Marker Light ever again in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, most most of the people would appreciate that. That's I'm true. sure. Well, it's just like yeah, I had a lot of issues. Like Tau are very cool. Uh, I like them a lot. Uh, but yeah, like the 
thing that drew me away, I just like I kind of explained before, is like we had like one duos tournament we played, and I just kind of didn't like the high complexity of game interactions in ninth edition Warhammer. Uh, mm-hmm. So much to a point where I basically cut it cold turkey. I was like, I don't ever want to play this game again. Um, <laughs> so I sold all my Tau, um, and Kyle got into Warcry, which is the like the smaller version of AOS. And I was like, oh, I still like complicated games. I'm a like little background on me. I'm like a huge D and D nerd. I've listened to like literal months of my <laughs> life in. Um, D and D podcasts, and uh, I've been playing for a long time. I DM, um, so the the fantasy thing is a little more my speed anyway. But I just didn't know anything about True. AOS. So that that is right. I remember when you were starting to get into Warcry. There were a couple war bands I threw your way because I'm like, listen, if you, even if you don't like it or don't play, you can use these as models in your D and D game. Yeah, and it's like they're the thing about AOS is they're beautiful models. Like it's like really mm-hmm. sick. So I saw like it was basically like, all right, I'll play Warcry. That's fun. And like we kind of played a couple games back and forth. Played a couple people at a local store. Um, um, and then I'm like watching, I started watching AOS battle reports and stuff like that. Cause it comes up on my YouTube. And, uh, there was, I saw one battle report where I saw one of the Arachnarok spiders and I was like, all right, this cold Turkey, I've sworn off like big war gaming for the rest of my <laughs> life thing. We're going to throw that all away. How do I own as many of these spiders as I can immediately? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got, I got re- way into gets, um, specifically because of the giant spiders. I just thought they looked really cool. I always hated spiders growing up and, uh, I just thought that that was a really cool, the model itself drew me into the game. And then I was like, mm-hmm. the more I learned about, um, rules interactions and how it was a much in, in my opinion, it seems like a much more lean game than 40 K. Like there's not as much like rules bloat. And I, I'm going to, you know, self-proclaimed. I haven't really played. I haven't played any 10th. I've watched some 10th and battle reports and stuff like that. Yeah. So I kind of know how they have done a good job of, you know, like titrating some of it out. Yeah. Um, it, it's still definitely dense. It's still like, you know, a 60 by 44 war game that yeah. takes three hours, but it, it, I don't think it's at the ninth edition complexity with the weird rules interactions. I think they had a little bit more forethought, but I think we've gone back and forth when it comes to complexity. Like Age of Sigmar does a great job of writing rules so that what you read is exactly what what it means to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot less, well, technically it says this. And yeah. if you interpret that this way, then it's like, because I remember early on we were like, I was trying to help you learn the game. Um, like uh what was it something happened in the hero phase and you because like you went to overwatch or something like that and i was like ah, read me the overwatch rules and then and it says in the charge phase and you're like mm. oh cool it's not the charge phase we're not we're not in the charge phase so clearly i cannot do this you yes. know what i mean there was no ambiguity about that and i appreciate that yeah it's really nice and it's like i i feel like they did a good job of um making like 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 the core rules and like army specific rules don't like overwrite each other you know what i mean like they very Mm -hmm. much kind of stay in their own lane and so like the interaction between like my specific army rules and your specific army rules in most cases is not like it's not you know uh ambiguous you know like it's, yeah. it's easy to kind of distill 98 percent of the interactions you're going to have and then those that you can't are quickly faq'd because of you know the amount of big tournaments and like things that are kind of publicized that you know a games workshop does a good job of kind of like fixing you know like i've had a lot yeah. less like i don't know like cheesy moments in uh aos i, I agree i i feel like like one i think um, the AOS writers get it right the first time per, more often than not. Um, and if there is a case where something like the rules say that it breaks the rules, they'll come out with a little addendum like right below it and say, this breaks this rule, just so you know. Yeah, like you know what I mean? in all cases except this, you know? Mm-hmm. Or like like there was one rule I remember where like the most current season of AOS is like the Endorian Locust season. And um, yeah. there's a lot of you know, spell casts and things like that, that like you get to like the damage of the spell kind of scales with the dice that you roll. And uh, they like, there was some ambiguity in like, you know, Hey, like if I can add primal, this new mechanic of primal dice where I can oh, add yeah. extra dice to my casting. Does that increase the value of my, you know, of my damage almost exponentially? Like it's crazy. You can like double the damage of a spell, which is broken. So yeah. um, 
they uh, they quickly FAQ'd things like that where it's like, oh, like like this excludes abilities like, and then they kind of listed a couple, and you know, mm-hmm. it's only like the, the true like. It, they, the they called two d six of it, the roll exactly like they called it a modifier which kind of separates yep. it from what creates the damage interaction yeah i agree i i definitely appreciate that uh, and i think aos um puts out their rules uh like pretty clearly like i don't know if you've it, looked at the rule book in your tournament book or if the big core book that i gave you mm-hmm. um but the numbering system, how they set up the rules is something that like really drove me to the game because I was so yeah. sick of like trying to figure out where the hell these rules were for 40k. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like one thing that 40k does have above AOS is a lot more rule discussion on Reddit and like YouTube personalities that discuss these rules. So like you'll know about a rule interaction, but like I would have never discovered that rule interaction organically if I haven't seen the discourse online about it. You yeah. Know what I mean, like if you're not plugged um, into a community, it's not like you can just read it and understand what it actually is supposed to look like when you play it. Oh, hundred percent. Cause it's stretched across like four books. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's like the core book and then there's the like tournament book and then your book and then their book, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like all of the FAQs for every single one of those books, like stacked yeah. on top of it. And AOS has a little bit of that too, but it's not as egregious. I would yeah. say. yeah, it's not as there's not as much minutia. Like things don't override each other. Like everything kind of mm-hmm. has its own lane, which is like with as complicated of a game as it is. You know what I mean? And it you kind of have to. You know, <clears throat> you have to like set yeah. your like the core rules. The core rules they never change. You know what I mean? We change yeah. like how we play the core rules, not what we're doing. Like not what they say. You know? True. Yeah, I definitely hope that in fourth it will be a little bit smoother because i feel like there are things that get like the primal dice and the modifiers this is something that i keep going back and forth on because like um i know you're not allowed to re-roll like if i roll two d6 yes it, until my master of magic i can i think <laughs> i'm pretty sure i can choose whether i can add primal dice to it or i can re-roll it but i can't do both i can't re-roll and then add primal dice i also know that as like a general like understood this is how this works but i can't point mm-hmm. you to the words that tell me that you know yeah yeah um, well, like in, in future podcasts we'll get super into like yeah. tournament packets specifically because i think you came in to playing competitively with age of Sigmar right at the end of uh galatian veterans yeah like I the did. galley vets mm-hmm. and i didn't um, use any of those <laughs> I didn't yeah use... nobody did yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, I, that was the peak of like uh they're Games Workshop is missing the mark on theming. You know what I mean? They they make a theme, and then the competitive, uh, the competitive environment looks at it and says, "Actually, the theme is this." Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. I mean? that, you, you know those like foot yeah, yeah. that you want us to play with. No one's touching any of that. Mm-mm. Um, even if your battle tactics are like, oh, like you know, there's a couple battle tactics where it's uh, it was like have a like a Galatian veteran holding like two separate points, one in your opponent's territory or something like that. I think I've seen one person get that off. Yeah, they would they would just make. Well, there's like, a lot of oh, armies getting... that just don't have good Galatian veterans. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. You don't have an option for that. Like all of my everything yeah. that qualifies as a galley vet is either way too fucking expensive or like you know. True. Even in like Stormcast, where it's like your heroes are supposed to be these like lords and knights, mm-hmm. and like you know they're going out here like doing this epic quest stuff, and it's like. They're like five wounds on a three-up save. Yeah, like you could breathe at them with a. And they're going to get a spell, <laughs> yeah. and they're going to die just as the same as anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, at least, yeah. Uh, and then this like kind of damage world that we live in, where yeah. people like know how to geek damage out of out of most units. Um, but yeah, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> there's going to be. There's, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future because we there's like you could break these down into specific topics where we go in. Uh, I'm really excited about the terrain rules. I would like to get like that done um, before before fourth because I think I think garrisons are super fun. I think it's like a super fun idea. I think it's a great way to implement like big terrain features uh that are like fully enclosed you know what i mean so you don't have to worry about like you know measuring through the thing you can just have this blanket rule of a garrison and it just works like that yeah and it it keeps it from you blocking like if you put down a big thing on the battlefield you can still technically move your people through it it takes a while 
right? But you can still like move your your units through it that are on like on foot and not getting blocked by it, mm-hmm. which I think is like really cool. But I've literally never seen anybody use that. No, I basically yeah. disregard mm-hmm. terrain rules entirely. Yeah, entirely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's that's definitely one of the the ones that I want to do is we sit down and like as homework read through the terrain rules section of our books like understand mm-hmm. how garrison works and i'd love to like play a game with you where every piece of terrain on the board is, is just, a garrison. <laughs> it's just a garrison and see like what that looks like and how that feels i don't it's interesting because like if something is in a garrison like you treat the garrison as the model yeah. right so, so it's, it's like your little age. yeah well, it's you, but you're also minus one to hit and plus one to save while you're yeah. inside the garrison. So there's a lot of little things I'd like to, to look at that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, but we'll we'll talk about all there. We have uh, a huge a huge amount of things that we want to talk about in the future because I know we've played some tournaments together. We have a lot of stuff to talk about those tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to Cherokee Open, like you said. So we'll we'll have a lot to talk about leading up to that. Um, as well as like an after action report of that. Um, and then leading into summer, we have the lead up to fourth. So we have so much stuff to talk about. And oh, that's yeah. mainly the reason why I wanted to have like this podcast with you. Because uh, like, there, we have a lot to talk about. We end up talking almost daily about this stuff for like 30 minutes a day, every day. So, yeah. so we, should record, to, <laughs> we should record it. Like, literally. <laughs> we should record it. Yeah, because I want... I want to get more people talking about this kind of stuff because I feel like you have that in 40k a lot where it's like people talking, people talking, people always talking about it. And like, I think Age of Sigmar is getting there. It's 100% getting there, but I definitely think like it could use more voices like in the pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. Um, But back to circling around to kind of like the hobby and sort of like our, our hobby pass. Like I like to talk about, um, when I talk about this hobby, I like to talk about the three P's, which are painting, uh, planning, and playing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you're thinking about like war games in general, there's a lot of those. And I think a lot of people get a lot of enjoyment out of each individual column of that. But in your opinion, what do you think as like a percentage wise? Like, where would you split up your percentage of where you get the most enjoyment out of this hobby in, in like painting, planning, or playing? So in so definitely in uh, I think I get the most enjoyment out of planning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say that's probably like forty five percent of my fun, and then it's like thirty five percent playing, and then ten percent right. Is that what I have left or twenty percent left? Uh, math. I don't know. I got. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, it's twenty percent left. I got twenty percent left for the painting because like painting. I'm not bad at painting, but no, I'm definitely you're... not good at painting. Like I'm no, like for... I'm getting ahead. better. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's it's I'm getting better, and like I do enjoy like you get that like cozy feeling of like when you paint a model and it looks really good. You're like, oh, let's go. But then there's sometimes yeah. where you paint a model uh, <laughs> and you're like, I'm gonna try something out, and you like you try it out, and you're like, hmm. I should have used that as a test piece, <laughs> but we're already here and we've already committed. So we're going to do the rest of like this. Yeah. Um, you're, you're definitely honing in on both the color, your colors that you like and the style. Cause that loon shrine that you have is looking awesome. Oh, yeah. And that's with like one coat, like not even like going back and like doing any sort of it's highlighting true. or dry brushing. Yeah, you're it's absolutely like you right. Put paint on I'm it. allergic to all those words. I don't got <laughs> 20% bro. 20%. We're <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, the, yeah, the, um, the painting process was definitely something that's like, it's, it's going to be short for me too. I would say, I think a lot more of it now because like I, I've gotten to a point where I understand how the paints that I found, like, Oh, if I use speed paints, I will actually paint models. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just started playing Seraphon and they take the speed paints super well. Mm-hmm. So I'm having, having a good time, but I did sit down for like three to four hours with a bunch of like 3d printed models and just tested paints. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's definitely the way to do it. Mm-hmm. I had a vague concept of what I wanted, but like I wanted to make sure it was good before I put it on these models. And like I encourage people to never like like I have a whole Imperial Guard army that looks eh. You know what I mean? It looks very like that man put paint on models. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those but models the have paint on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was the first time that I ever tried, and I, I learned a lot from it. So True. you can always strip and repaint. If you ever like get ten years down the road, 
and you're like, oh, I really don't like the way these look. You can always just strip and repaint them. It's not that big of a deal. True. But yeah, I definitely like, I think like the, the, so when you're saying like the planning and the playing, like obviously playing is like, like I'm, we both are very, like we enjoy, like we're not like, I don't think we're competitive in nature. Like we're not aggressive people, but we like, Mm -hmm. we like competitive games and like hobbies that have a competitive side to them. Yeah. I, we we definitely grew up with sports, mm-hmm. and you can tell like how we play. We grew up with sports and like playing like like PvP video games. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that that's the fun that comes out of this. That like me and this person are gonna rock up to a table for three hours. Someone's gonna come out on top. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like all good. Um, it's all good and fun. You know what I mean? Like your your yeah. buddy buddy, you're hanging out, and then you're like, all right, we started the clock. We're playing the game. You know what I mean? And it's like. Yep. I legitimately prefer when somebody like takes the game. Like if somebody crosses the table for me, like obviously I want everyone to have a good time and like I'm down to like get more casual if the game's not going well for someone. But like it, even if I'm getting like absolutely rolled, I want like I want you to hit me. You know what I mean? Like cuz I need to <laughs> feel it so that I can plan for it going forward. You know? Like well legitimately, like make it as bad as you yeah. can possibly make it cuz like if I yeah. can't beat if I can't beat it right now, I won't be able to beat it later, you know? Yeah. And the um, like the harder lessons are the ones that come into your brain the yeah. most. You know what I mean? Like I will always remember the time uh, that Emma with Nurgle was basically just like, oh yeah, your whole army can't pile in and fight. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that is a lesson that I am currently learning. Yes. <laughs> that's crazy. I do need to do that to kill you. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. You know that like <laughs> that, that, thing, key component. that thing that I can usually yeah. do that I'm not allowed to do anymore. Yeah. But that like happened like two years ago, and it's still like in my in my head. Yeah, it's still um, a really important component of a lot of Nurgle armies. Like I ran up against it yeah. in the, what's it called in a couple tor- like two tournaments or three tournaments ago, and it was like mm-hmm. if you don't get a bomb charge, like you got to really plan how you're gonna land because it matters. Yeah, true. That so I know I think both of us have a lot of like I think both of us had a lot of points in planning because I think planning is what. Oh, yeah. fuels us and i know what my planning looks like but like what would you say in that planning is the things that really like drive you forward i just like looking at like rules combinations and like my biggest thing like again like when when building and then this is like a whole nother topic is like what do you do when building a list and i'm sure we mm-hmm. can go into like a big conversation about that oh but, yeah like I, I know a big thing for me in the planning stage is like looking at like model point efficiencies and like what the mm-hmm. job basically like what does this model do how well does it do it and like how much does it cost you know and like those those three things add up to like do i want to have this in my army you know yeah and like it also you have to kind of bear in mind like you don't want like a bunch of glass cannons because you're just gonna like fizzle you know you don't Mm -hmm. want a lot of tank because you have nothing to pick up threats off the board like there is a lot of balancing that goes into it too but i'm a big like I will throw like point efficient models into a list, even if they don't work together. Like they completely, my, like my, like quote unquote tournament list has spiders, trolls, and squigs in it. Like, I don't like lean into any one of the like yeah. trees super hard. Like, I, I probably lean into trolls the most, but like, mm-hmm. I don't like, I see the value in like the different kind of like, uh, like schools of thought when it comes to gets and like what each of them bring to the table. And I'm like, Oh, I like that. This does this, this does this job for me really well. And that does that job for me really well. And I kind of like, you can kind of like build and shop and like a building and shopping list is like very fun. Like, and I like, I've yeah. made way more lists than I'm ever going to play, <laughs> but <laughs> it's really fun to kind of see how things stack up, you know? True. hundred percent. I I'm definitely in that same boat where like before I get on the plane, for my travel, I make sure that I'm signed into my app, mm. my like uh, Age of Sigmar companion app, and then I make sure I like have access to everything that I I need in there before I turn it on airplane mode. Yeah. And then when I get on the airplane, I'm just sitting there and like scrolling through the app and like looking at different units and like looking at different combos, um, looking at different things that I might have looked over before when I first like started like Seraphon specific. I I think I have a good bead on kind of like what everything does in Mm -hmm. stormcast um but even in stormcast there are things where i'm just like what would a list look like if i wanted to ally in uh like three steam tanks yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh i know (laughs) (laughs) how do i get steam tanks in this list (laughs) dude i'm telling Um, you that happened when the big pigs came out for iron jaws i was like how many big pigs can i bring two yeah two Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they get better uh, rolls, I'm in. Mm-hmm. 
the uh um but yeah looking how everything fits i like to look at like um keywords because i think keywords are one of those things where it's like harder to know until you're like specifically looking at um individual units uh so that's where i was like oh i'm on this stegadon like i'm always going to bring one stegadon mm. because it there's the battle tactic in the book battle tactic which very rarely ever get changed where it's take a uh take an objective with a skink unit well if you have a stegadon that counts as 10 and it's you know, relatively tanky with a lot of wounds and it, it's ish fast. It can tow onto objective and just take that objective yeah. because it has the skink keyword that counts, you know? So I like looking at that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I also love making meme lists, like oh, yeah. just making meme lists in the app that the one that's still in my app right now is still like the one steam tank commander, a Lord ordinator and like seven steam tanks. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm like, I have I have a Lord Ordinator model sitting in my uh, shelf that I'm like, I'm never going to use this. But... And I read it again, and I'm like, wait a second. It gives plus one to hit in a nine-inch bubble to all war machines. Steam tanks are war machines. Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, I to do. To save, you say. Yeah, that like per it perks yours up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like that where you see one thing and that gets you thinking like, oh, well, what are war machines? What are order war machines? What do those look like? Yeah. And then like you could be like, oh, well, you could fit a bunch of cannons or you could fit a bunch of steam tanks. Mm -hmm. And then if I do it in the, I keep wanting to say coalesced. I know that's Seraphon in yeah. the 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 this uh the Stormcast faction that lives on the ground where they work together Stormkeep. with uh Stormkeep, but it's. I'll find it eventually. I'll put it yeah, up on the screen. Know. I'm just going to start yeah. guessing words. I'm going to start putting Stormcast no. words together just to guess. Because you just Lightning like, hammer. 100%, dude. I like, again, like Gits, <laughs> like like Scuttle, whatever it's called. Um, fuck, uh, what is it? The Grim Scuttle? Scuttle yeah, Grim Scuttle. Grim. Or, yeah, it's like literally like they use eight words. And it's like any combination <laughs> of these eight words is a different thing. And it's like. Yeah. Stormcast isn't um, that different. Stormcast, they just use big, complicated lot, words. They just use... A lot of Age of Sigmar does that, specifically Corn, where it says everything is blood and skulls. Blood, murder, blood and skull. skull something. Yeah, blood, mm -hmm. skull, murder, angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but they have a special rule where it says, hey, if you take this, you can... I think it's just Stormkeep. I think it is Stormkeep. It's like, you can ignore the ally rules. And for every three units that you take in stormcast you can take one city sigmar unit cool so you're like eh? <laughs> so you're, so vindictor vindictor oh. hero steam tank multiple yes. times. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was thinking it's like if i want because you can only have one steam tank because i think there are 230 points so you can only have one Dang. if you use the regular rules so that you can't sucks. do two yeah right but you could do you could do one but, steam tank in a cannon yeah <laughs> Uh, or you could take uh, just a bunch of like garbage tier stormcast units as screens mm -hmm. and take three steam tanks and then a lord ordinator to like sit in the middle of them. Might be kind of worth. <laughs> Might be kind of. <laughs> it it one hundred percent wouldn't be because unfortunately steam tanks still I think only count as two on an objective. Yeah, that is so kind of lame. Those things they should like, really count eh. as five. Like I think like they should. Yeah, they should be a monster. Mm -hmm. Or or whatever. Well, two hundred thirty points. Like they should count as five. Like my spiders are like count as ten, and they're fucking two hundred ten yeah. points. <laughs> I think that's just like the name of the game. They yeah. don't want to like because because they have a two up save yeah. and like they're good at shooting and they're like not terrible yeah. in combat. So it's like yeah. listen, they, they, there has to be some like give and take, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, part of me wants to think it's like an oversight, but the other part of me is like, eh, you can't give like one thing everything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um. But yeah, that's that's the meme, like how like making meme lists or like looking at models and then seeing like how those models would fit into a list. Because I have I, I have a bunch of models. Uh, most are built, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, Ionis is built. Um, I've seen a lot of him recently in lists and I still haven't made up a, a good list that I think I like him in. So that's still one of my challenges. Around the planning stuff. Does he have um, the shrug? Does he have the spell shrug? Because he's on a little no. dragon? oof no that's a big oof that's large <laughs> that is a pretty large oof <laughs> yeah. he, he has uh i think he is minus one to the attacks characteristics in melee hmm. 
Yeah, so it's very meh. It's like an okay defensive stat, but yeah. like you, he's not great at melee. Does he have nine dragon is okay. or more? No, he has more. I'm not. Oh, I don't know how to spell his name. I own <laughs> us. There's an I and an O and an N. And oh, I, oh, dude, I got US. it. Oh gosh, got it. It's loading. He has 16 wounds. Oh my goodness. Does he have a word save? No. All right. All right. All, right. <laughs> all of these. So you're telling me he's dragons. edible. <laughs> you're telling. Oh yeah. He's super edible, and that's why I'm like the. It we're, we've once you've gotten to that point, it's already too late. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a couple key things on this thing. I mean, 16 wounds is like nothing to like you know swing yeah, whatever. At. And a natural three up save. Yeah. And he's a priest, so like you know he can heal. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff in there that like it's really good, but he's not like he's not like a he's not a carry eye. He's not a jump in there and no, do a, a bunch of he's damage. A buff and, piece. Mm-hmm. He's I will 100 percent get your translocation off. Yeah, I will I will make sure you don't re-roll a one into a one. And he's not a slash in combat either. No, he's fine. He's very he's very like dragon esque. You know yes. what I mean? Like storm drake esque. Kind of fragile, hits like a truck. <laughs> yeah, kind of fragile, hits like uh, it's like a um, not like an F one fifty. Yeah, like kind of like one of those, like a large crossover, like a small SUV, you know. Yeah, definitely not a Ram. <laughs> like a Toyota uh, Rav Four. <laughs> hits like a Toyota <laughs> Rav like Four. Exactly. Like, <laughs> truck, very truck esque. Yeah, but not exactly. But definitely truck. like a smaller truck. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> true um but yeah we, i think i think we both love planning i think that's why we both love talking about it the most is yeah i think we like talking about like the planning aspect of like list building but but also like how it's also very riffy kind of work together like it's very yeah. like oh like how does this like how does this interact with this oh that, uh, i don't know if i like that but i like this about that and like is there any way like it's like we know like even looking at that model that conversation right there we're like okay like what are like some of the key things that i would like th- like the thing that makes this an auto include is a word save if you give this thing a word save it's an auto include so it's like yeah. oh like maybe you work it into the list and then give it the like six up word save you know or something like sure. if there's like a buff or a character or whatever well, that gives the, it the a thing five that you up. could do is you have uh your my favorite homies um, floating around the board with him. Um, oh, Raiders! It's true. Raiders. Raiders yeah. are just well, good. See, Raiders are just yeah. good. Well, that's true. The thing with him that's different than any any other dragon with Praetors is the problem that you have with the dragons and the Praetors is that the Praetors have to keep up. You know what I mean? So yeah. the Praetors are eating command points to like either run with them mm-hmm. or uh, you have to like teleport them, which sometimes doesn't work. But However, I, but Ionis can like yeet them. <laughs> like, That's all true. right, you guys go over there. I'll be there in a second, and yeah. then he gets over there, and <laughs> you then you can hang go out over them. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then they block his movement because I've done that before in the past. Right? That is true. Like had Karazai run over, like was going to go to a place, and then in the hero phase, I translocated them over, and then had to like be very specific where I put them so I could also fit Karazai where I wanted him to go. Mm-hmm. It was it's a whole thing. It's a little like mini. It's a mini game. game. This is a not mm-hmm. super fun interaction mini game. It's not. No. What's the most annoying is that, and I think they knew what they were doing when they did this. Almost every other uh, bodyguard esque rule in the game, right, was basically just like if this unit is X distance from a hero unit, you can shrug runes onto these guys, right? Yeah. This one, it says you have to set it up next to the hero they're protecting on the board. Which means you can't put them in deep strike. Mm. So you can't like move Karazai up and then have your Praetors fall from the sky and protect him. That is they weren't oddly assigned specific. That hero yeah. at the beginning. And I think they didn't want, didn't want that to happen because like you can just have three units of Praetors in the sky and then yeah. <laughs> as they're dying, just keep keep putting more. Yeah, next I do to get him. that. I do get that. You can't just like like be like, oh, it's Karazai, but he has forty eight wounds because I have mm-hmm. Praetors in the sky. Because I have massive amount of Praetors in the yeah. sky. Yeah. But it is annoying because you're like, well, now I have to start in the board and that makes my movement weirder. But the, uh, yeah, I definitely think we, we definitely like the, the planning. I think that's the most fun to like discuss. But I want, like we were talking about before we started recording, I need to play more. I, like, I would love to try to get back into, because when I was starting to play 40K, I was getting like one game a week. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I want to get back to that area where I'm playing mm-hmm. one game a week of AOS. Um, yeah. Ideally against, like, a variety of different opponents. Yeah, because then you can, like, see other armies, see, like, what, like, yeah. rules interactions are. Like, yeah. It's important. Like, yeah. it's, it's like, an element of the game is, like, and I think it's a little less, like, one of the reasons that I kind of like this game more than 40k again not like I'm not trying to make this whatever I know at the beginning we talked a lot yeah, about we'll, like, we'll have a whole yeah we'll have a whole podcast that is dedicated to 40K. why we started playing 40k and why we shifted to playing Age of Sigmar. yeah that's but, definitely a topic I haven't written down yeah. in the future it's very like um like like the armies feel different in a good way and they mm-hmm. don't like but like if you have like there's seven different ways to say the same rule. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, oh, like, like people call like there's recursion, but there's also summoning, but there's also, yeah. you know, like the a yeah. good example of that. And you, you, we had a, a good discussion about this earlier. Um, is the pick it up and put it in your pocket rule? Yes. The rule where it's like after you get done fighting, you roll the a dice. Egg, man. If you roll, yeah. yeah. If you if you roll higher than the unit that you're fighting's wound characteristic. And that's where it gets specific because mm-hmm. for me, for like my dragons have the dragon to the tempest. I say, okay, like opponent, please select one model in this unit to remove. Yes. Where a bunch of other people's are like, that's you mine get to select. Mine's like, yeah, I get to get pick to which model around yep. me. And I'm just like, you're yep. in the pocket. <laughs> yep. And I think uh, the carnosaur, his special monsters action is like that. Um, I believe he gets to pick, but it's only he gets to chomp something, but it's only within one inch. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you have to be, you have to like, hey, hey, you have a unit of you know twenty skeletons. Which one of these are the like flag carrier? (laughs) Which one of the which which one of you looks important? (laughs) The one skeleton raises. I'm gonna charge. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna charge within one inch of you and then eat you. That's so funny. Kind of tasty. I don't know why, but skeletons remind me like so indicatively of battle droids. I don't know why. They are kind of skinny like that. Yeah. I I like them. I like uh, the spooky, scary skeletons. Or yeah, battle droids. I love I love both. I love that concept of like like horde armies, like you like waves and waves of inefficient fighters. Yeah. Yeah, I do like. I just don't want to move them around. <laughs> that is, dude. I'm telling you, I have I have units of five, and I'm like, I'm printing movement trays. I can't do this. Like, I'm allergic. I just can't. I can't. I can't be bothered. To move five. Dude, I spent. I I probably spent because I bought I bought movement trays for my Necrons because I I was running like sixty warriors. Yeah. And I bought movement trays, and then my first game that I was like moving them around, I realized. I can't, I can't use the movement trays. Like a core component of their, re, like their regeneration is you get to set models up closer to the enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like the whole, and like you want to spread out, like you want to like either spread out or get skinny, depending on if you want to fit within buffs or if you want to like absolutely just cut off people from like, like sections of the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's like, you can't do that. You can kind of do that with movement trays, but it's, it's much more adva- advantageous for you to like not set them up individually and like spread them out in cohesion to like make it so that they're touching a point and that they're getting this buff from this other model mm-hmm. and that when they die they can like you know shuffle 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 and get more people on the point. It's so that was when I was like ah can't do movement trades then huh rip yeah and then I played knights <laughs> and then I played knights and I was happy no movement, <laughs> and then I, no no movement, movement trays required. my movement is a tray. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. my movement is a tray especially with your spiders oh, yeah, dude. I know that was a big component for why you got into spiders oh, yeah. earlier, I'm not like, moving I don't goblins wanna... you can't make me do no. it I won't <laughs> <laughs> yeah well <laughs> I under like looks at uh, I remember when we were first getting in I was like yo like we have good 3D printable files for Stabas. Yeah, just get into and, Stabas, like, Stabas, Stabas are good. Like, yeah. they hold objectives from nine inches away. And you're like, I don't care. And I'm, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not moving 20 dudes, like, <laughs> into range of a point to then pick up 12 of them and then have to, like, regen six of them. I'm not doing it. You can't make me do it. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're good. I, I get that. it. I did the math. They're good. 100%. Yeah. But I'm just, like, not here for that quality of life. I would take a less efficient unit. Because I don't want to do that. Yeah, hundred percent. I would say for my percentage, I would say like thirty percent paint. I would say like 
forty percent plan mm-hmm. and thirty percent play. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, we're fine. What happened? This is fine. Nothing. Did you attack my cup your fell microphone? Over. Yeah, <laughs> my cup your fell cup over. Microphone. <laughs> cup <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> There's no liquid in it anymore. Yeah, so it's very, uh, it's very typical. <laughs> it's very typical. Um, yeah, I definitely am enjoying painting more. I want to keep painting. I'm excited because, like, I feel like I'm at a point in my painting journey where I feel confident with painting models now. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm excited to get these Seraphon painted. And, you should. Like, they have look fantastic. The Thank you. Uh, they're very poppy, which is what I like. Mm-hmm. Where like Stormcast, like my Stormcast, and when I started painting them, I wanted them to be more like down to earth. I wanted to play Stormkeep. That was like my whole thing. Like I wanted them to like feel like these knights that live amongst the people. Yeah. Um, so that's how I painted them and that's how I based them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it like, they are just a wall of silver dudes that all kind of look the same. It's all just like my green, my silver and my gold and like a little bit of red. And that's mm-hmm. it. And across the whole army. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's my green. So it's like, <sighs> I've painted so many like that. And it's kind of funny because I'm so used to painting that. I bought, I was super excited and like so, so excited to paint the um, the Warcry Warband, the Questors. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I want to paint them all in like different paint schemes. And then I was like, oh, well, I want to paint the Annihilator guy like white, obviously, because I want him to be like nice Excelsior. Mm-hmm. Oh, but then I want to paint the other, like this other person in like black armor. So I'm going to have to like relearn how to paint black armor. Um, and then I'm like the leader I want to be from Hammers of Sigmar. So now I'm going to have to learn how to paint gold armor. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I was like, you're, ah. you're creating a laundry list for yourself or like a, a book. I know. Yeah. Literally, literally like anytime that I do that, where I'm just like, oh no, now I have to like do the whole like test a paint scheme or like test how these colors like mm. that takes like all the motivation out of me which sucks um so i kind of got all of that out of the way uh for my seraphon so now i'm like just ready to hit the ground running yeah and your seraphon are looking fantastic check him out on creator gator it's uh on tiktok it they look amazing thanks yeah i'm i'm working on it it's a it's a work in progress it's a labor of love mm-hmm. i'm excited for it um so to kind of wrap it up what would you say your favorite model slash favorite unit would be both in the game overall and with your specific army that you like? Uh, I think my favorite unit in the game has got to be the, um, the Arachnorok spider with war party. Um, mm-hmm. And I say that just because one, the spider is what brought me into this hobby. I love it. Uh, it's a model that I don't think gets a lot of love. Um, like yeah. it doesn't get a lot of play and I see it has a lot of value. Um, and I think that I am implored slash like trying to get at least two in every single list that I run because I'm trying to, like, I think it's a, a you know, I'm not, not to sound like a whatever, but like, it's like a tech piece that like has a ton of value and like, they're a little squishy, but like they bring, like, they're kind of just like, high tier chaff you know mm-hmm. at least and that's how i play them um but uh yeah so that's my favorite model uh it's my favorite model that i painted i think and uh you know it's a, it's a fun model to play uh yeah but how about you um i'm kind of tied because like i think my favorite unit is just like the humble vindictor i mm-hmm. love like i love battle line units i think battle line units are great yeah um but I think my, like, now that I'm, I think probably biased because I'm looking at them right now. Yes. I just built another one this afternoon, but I think Croxagore, like yeah. Croxagore Warspawn are like such a good glow up. Yeah, they're like, really The models sick. look amazing. Um, the, they take paint super well. They have so much character. Um, and I just, I love alligators. So my favorite animal. And like, I've wanted to play Seraphon since mm-hmm. day one. Of yeah. getting into this hobby. But, like, dinosaurs the are cool, are, bro. Di- everyone likes yeah, dinosaurs. Di- yeah. Everyone <laughs> likes dinosaurs. And like, I kind of stopped because like when I started playing AOS, the, like there were like, I don't know of the 10 people that played Seraphon at my club, I think four of, or 10 players that played Age of Sigmar, 
four of them played Seraphon. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I'm not going to be I'll one of those guys. Cast. Yeah. yeah I'm not gonna... Cause it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. Um, and I, I still love my Stormcast. I love my Stormcast. It's always fun to try to think like, how can I make, how it's like that meme. Like, how can I make money off this? <laughs> I got to figure out how to make money off this. Money off this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to make Stormcast work. Yeah. Um, and it, that's going to be obviously the same thing with Coalesced. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that's. Do you have a favorite model that isn't in your in your army that you think you like? Ooh, that's a good one. I really like the um, the eels from um, uh, the oh, Italian, yeah. whatever it's called, the sea people. Love those mm-hmm. models. I love magma droths. Are really really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think. Ineth Deepkin are the, yeah, I the soulless Deepkin. sea elves. Yeah, really cool. I don't love like I, again. I don't love how they play, but I like like I love the model. Oh my gosh, Belthanos is like I was like I need to buy I need to buy Zero or I need to buy I need <laughs> I, to, I need to make a tree army because of Belthanos. Like I love. The I had model. to like I had to talk you off the ledge of you being like, what if I just started this army and I'm like. They are one of the more expensive armies to play, and oh. they are very complicated to play because yes. it's a lot of like teleporting through trees, shenanigans. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, and it, and they're mm-hmm. good. They're good in the current season because of all the magic stuff. But like, I'm still like, I was like, dude, ugh, sending out a monster like run in charge and an aura. He's got a five up ward built in on the war scroll. Oh, uh, yeah. He built he he hits like a truck. Like, there's like a hundred reasons why I'm like I love this guy. <laughs> um. And uh, but like yeah, again, I can't like I don't play order. I'm not gonna bring him in. Um, but you, how about you? Anything? Any uh, any call outs of people, you know, or models that aren't necessarily in Stormcast or Co- uh, Seraphon? Or Seraphon. Or Steam tanks. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm getting some Steam tanks. Oh yeah. Um, shoot, I had one. I I think I'm always tempted by death. I think the death factions yeah, pretty cool. are really cool. They I've do death very of... well. They do de- yeah. like AOS does death very well. Like it's not like so good. Yeah. The um and I've I've read a couple books just like focusing around like death and like mm-hmm. they're much more like shades of gray yeah. than I think like um they kind of look like, which mm-hmm. I think is really interesting. I think it's I think the majority of the factions besides chaos and even sometimes chaos are like in a weird basket of we had no choice. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, well, the or like all of the order, including like, like the God King Sigmar himself, like left. And then chaos just took over like our land unopposed. What do you expect us to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, they're kind of just like our new gods now. So it is what it is, especially on like the Nurgle side. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've listened to the Gardas, um books with Gardas and, uh, a lot of Nurgle, the, the Knights of the Flies and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, okay, this is pretty cool. So I think like every faction or big faction, like mega faction has like something going for them. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think like the skeletons, just like the the skeletons that... From OBR um, or from... Um, no, uh, the OBR Vampire is kind ones. of a miss for me. OBR has weird just models. Regular... I, don't, I don't love the model scheme. Like, like, I, like yeah. I like the idea of having like the Roman Legion esque army and you just have mm-hmm. like, these phalanx of like soldiers and things like that. But like, I just don't love the models, but there's, I agree. Uh, grave Lords has skeletons. Yeah. Soul blood graveyard, a uh, grave Lords death rattle skeletons. Yeah. I think they just do skeletons so well. Mm-hmm. And I love that kind of like Eastern European aesthetic. I think they just nailed it. Yeah. Like I've seen a lot of, like 3D printers, like kind of t- have their take on like soul by graveyards, and I think that the GW ones are just so good. They are, <laughs> especially with like all of their special characters. I think they're really cool. If I ever get into death, that's that's gonna be the first stop for mm-hmm. me. But I always love to see death rattle skeletons and just like these massive hordes. And I know it was kind of like a little bit cringe recently competitively with like 120 skeletons and there's mm-hmm. nothing nothing you can do about it but we're like zombies um, like people do the zombies or period. zombies yeah. yeah but there's no, there's like nothing you can do about it it's just a big blob that's gonna like i know, can't do enough damage to do anything at that yeah, yeah exactly you're gonna throw everything you can at it and it's gonna get back up but like that's kind of that's kind of thematic though yeah that's kind of like the that 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 is that's, the tech that that's the, the vibe <laughs> You have to, but yeah, the balance, the balance is, is you have to make it like playable like that, but not like oppressive, you know? Yeah, true. And it's hard to do because people, people are smart. People know how to play. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I think that's where we'll probably call it. We're yeah. at 54 minutes, which I think is more than enough. Uh, more Content. than enough audio file for me to try to yeah. figure out how to do all my editing and posting and all that kind of stuff. But thanks for, um, thanks as always. I know you're always going to be the person that I'm talking to on this. We might have some guests in the future, oh, yeah. but Happy I'm excited. Here. Oh yeah. I'm excited to keep, uh, keep the stuff rolling. Kind of excited to keep playing, excited to keep playing all the way up till fourth and um, always feed your creative side. Thanks again.